Okay, this is a multi-part tutorial based on a packet tracer activity that I created as practice for the CCNA2 uh, lab final. And in this packet tracer, we're now on step four. And in step four, we're going to configure R1 as a DHCP version four server. And we're going to configure R3 as a DHCP version six server. So R1 is going to serve up IP addresses for two VLANs, VLAN 15 here, the green VLAN, and VLAN 25 here, the yellow VLAN. And R3 is going to be serving up uh, DNS server information on this IPv6 network that we have, a little test IPv6 network that's being developed up here. So this should be a lot of fun. We're going to start here with configuring R1 as a DHCP server. So let's take a look at the instructions. Create a DHCP pool named pool15, all caps, for the 15 network. And another pool, pool25, all caps, for the 25 network. We're going to exclude the first five addresses in both pools. And these DHCP pools will need to serve up the network, or the network will need to be defined in subnet mask, and also the default router and the DNS server. So let's get started right away. We'll open up R1 here. And I'll stretch this out a little bit. EN for enable, conf t to get to global config mode, and let's set up our pool. So we'll start with IP DHCP pool, and then the pool name. So all caps P O O L and 15. So that's gonna that sets up our first DHCP pool. Notice we're in DHCP config mode now. And now, now that we're in there, we can establish what is the network that we're going to be uh, serving addresses for. So we'll say network 192.168.15.0 with a 24-bit subnet mask. So we're going to serve up addresses for a 15 network slash 24. And now for the default router, the default router is going to be 192.168.15.1. And then the DNS server, if we look over here, the DNS server is 192.168.35.253. 192.168.35.253. All right, so that's our first pool of addresses. Let's make our second pool, and then we'll exclude the addresses that we want excluded from both pools. So I'll do an up arrow and say IP DHCP pool, and this will be pool 25. And then we need to set up the network. This will be network 25. I'm just using up arrow on my keyboard to go through the command history here. And then default router is 25.1. And the DNS server is the same DNS server. So that sets up both of our pools. So now we have a pool for each of these VLANs where we might have hosts uh, connecting to these switches here. So now we need to set up our excluded addresses. So for our excluded addresses, I'm going to exit here and go back to global config mode and say IP DHCP ex and hit the tab key on my keyboard and you can see it completes the command for me IP DHCP excluded address and we're going to exclude the first five addresses in each network so one two one nine two dot one six eight dot fifteen dot five and I can put in a space and a question mark see if I'm missing anything nope so that's it so that's for the 15 network. That's going to exclude 192.168.15.1, and then we put a space to 15.5. So I'll just do up arrow and change those 15s to twos. And I've got the same thing now for the 25 network. So now our DHCP server is completely configured with two pools of addresses to hand out. Um, default router, DNS server, and some excluded addresses that we want to exclude, like the router's address and things like that. So um, let's see here. Let's test it out. So we'll close this window and we'll go to PC1 here. 
go to the desktop, IP configuration, and all we have to do is change this from static to DHCP and see if it picks up an IP address. You can see it did. Notice it picked up 192.168.15.6, so it skipped 1 through 5 because we excluded them. It's got the subnet mask, it's got the default gateway, and the correct DNS server. So that's perfect. I'm just going to minimize this window now. And then PC2 here. And if this is correct, it should pick up an IP address in the 25 network. So we'll go to DHCP. It's requesting the address. And you can see, sure enough, it picked up 25.6 and the subnet mask and the default gateway and the DNS server. So that worked out really nicely, and we have both PCs. The other thing we might want to test is test if we can ping now from these PCs to our default gateway at router R1. Remember, we set up sub interfaces on router R1 so that R1 is the default gateway for all of our VLANs. So it might be worth testing that. So we'll close this, open up a command prompt, and see if we can ping our gateway. and you can see that we can so that's a good sign and I can do that same test now from PC2 just to make sure that I have that working and I forgot the ping and I can ping from that PC as well so that tells me a lot of things it tells me that our switch ports are configured correctly the trunks are working and that we can reach our gateway and that we've picked up these IP addresses which was quite important. So now what we're going to do is we're going to configure R3 so that R3 is an IPv6 version uh, DHCP server. Now for an IPv6 network this whole process works a lot differently. So in an IPv6 network you can see here that PC4, notice what I've put here in this purple box, slack plus DHCP version 6. So for PC4 to pick up automatic IPv6 addressing information, it does it, let's say, with using a combination of, in this case, Slack and DHCP version 6. In other words, the PC is going to use stateless address auto configuration. When the PC boots up, we're going to turn it on for auto configuration, and it's going to send out a router solicitation message to the router. And in return, the router is going to respond with a router advertisement, and the router itself is going to hand out an IPv6 address. Basically, uh, not the address, it's going to hand out essentially the IPv6 subnet, and the PC will auto-configure a address, a global unicast address, based on that subnet information that the router responds with. The router will also send the PC its address as the default gateway. Let's test it out to see the Slack portion in action. So this is stateless address auto configuration. We go to the PC. Notice we have an IPv6 configuration. You've got DHCP, auto config, or static. Right now it's set to static. And you can see that by default, with the IPv6 protocol enabled, the PC automatically has a link local address. It needs a global unicast address. With IPv6, each PC needs two addresses, a link local and a global unicast address if it's going to communicate across networks. It also needs an IPv6 gateway and let's say a DNS server. So we go to auto config and you can see it automatically picks up an address, but what it's picked up is it's picked up what's important is the subnet information. So it learned that it's the 2001 DB8 DC colon one subnet and then it auto configured its interface ID once it had the subnet information in other words the first half of the address is essentially the network portion and the second half of the address is the interface ID portion that identifies the host uniquely and that parts auto configured it needed to pick up the subnet information and the network information from the router which it did it also picked up the 64-bit network prefix and it learned the gateway the router's link local address, FE80 colon colon 3. What it wasn't able to pick up was the DNS server information from the router. To do that, the router can be configured as a DHCP version 6 server, and it can hand out that DNS server information using DHCP version 6, but not through Slack. Slack gives essentially the PC the address, the IP address, network prefix, and the gateway, but not the DNS server information. So we're gonna to need to set up the router as a DHCP version six server if we also wanna hand out the DNS server information. 
So let's configure that on the router now. So what we'll do is we'll open up R3 here and enable ConfT to get to global config mode and we'll set up our IPv6 pool. So we'll say IPv6 DHCP pool and let's look at our instructions here. Configure R3 as a stateless DHCP version 6 server. Create an IPv6 DHCP pool named pool IPv6, all caps, and provide the DNS server information, IPv6 address for the DNS server that we need to give. All right, and then some other information here. Note, DHCP version 6 needs to be applied to the interface, and the ND other config flag will need to be set for stateless DHCP version 6. So there's a few configurations that we need to set up on the interface to make this work. In other words, on the router's interface. So first of all, we'll set up this pool, and the pool is pool IPv6, all caps, and that puts us into DHCP configuration mode for IPv6, and we'll set up the DNS server. All right, that's it. That is the DHCP pool. We're just going to hand out the DNS server information because the router is handing out the subnet, the network prefix, and the default gateway. All we need to do with the DHCP version 6 server is hand out the piece that's missing, which is the DNS server information. So now that we've done that, I'll type exit, and I need to go into the interface that's going to hand this out. Now that on this R3, it's going to be the interface that's pointing towards our hosts, our IPv6 hosts, and that's gigabit 0 slash 0. And once we're in the interface, we'll say IPv6 DHCP. I'll put a space and a question mark, and you can see here there is a configuration for making it a server. So we'll say IPv6 DHCP server space question mark, and then the name of the IPv6 DHCP pool. Well, in this case, it is pool IPv6 in all caps. So that tells us that the DHCP server is going to be a DHCP version 6 server on that interface. And also, we need to set this flag right here the ND other config flag. And by setting this command, it's going to basically tell the router that DHCP version 6 is going to be working in conjunction with Slack stateless address auto configuration to hand out the IP addressing, the IPv6 addressing, the gateway, and the DNS server information so that they're going to be working together essentially, Slack and DHCP. So let's do that right now. So we'll say ND space and then let's put a question mark and you can see here okay I got the command wrong let's try this IPv6 space ND space question mark and you can see here there's a choice right on the top that says other dash config dash flag other stateful configuration flag so let's just do that so OTH I'll hit tab on the keyboard finish the command and now it's set and now all we need to do is go to our client PC4 and see if it can pick up this DNS server information as well. So what I'll do is I'll go back to static and then I'll go back to auto config and I'll do it one more time here and it seems like it's not picking it up so let's close that out and try again static auto configuration you can see here now it's picked up the IPv6 DNS server information all we need now is just that address. Okay, I keep going back and forth from static to auto config, making sure to get it to work. And you can see now we have all the information that we need. The IPv6 address, the network prefix, the IPv6 gateway, and the DNS server information. Once again, the link local address was already auto configured when we opened up this tool. The, the client, the PC client itself had auto configured its link local address. So you can see that it worked. We picked up our IPv6 address, our gateway, and our DNS server. So I'm just going to minimize this. And now we're ready for step five.